welcome to Board Game Binge. The place where we bring you bite-sized, bingeable board game content across the industry. I'm your host, James Staley, and in this episode, we're welcoming back Stefan Godot of Godot Games. Godot Games are experts at social deduction games. The reprint of Among Cultists with expansions is currently on Kickstarter. Stefan, welcome to the binge. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you so much, James. I always love your your uh, your you know your feelings and you you bring your your passion to it to your intro. I love it. Hi. <laughs> I, had, I hesitated there because I was saying welcome to the binge. I'm like, wait a second, welcome back to the binge. Welcome back to the binge, my friend. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, yeah. You've been here. Uh, episode for those who uh, who don't know, Stefan, we're going to do a quick overview just uh, to bring people up to speed. Uh, but episode sixty six, uh, you were a guest. You're also a guest in episode two twenty. So. Uh, welcome back, my friend. It's so good to yeah. see you. Uh, got to catch up with you at Essen this year. So we finally got to actually meet each other in person. We've been kind of virtual buddies over the past few years, but uh, it's cool to kind of finally see somebody that you've known virtually in person. Uh, how was your experience at Essen this year? You you seem like you were pretty uh, pretty pumped. Yeah, Essen was insane last year. So, um, you know, after the two years with Corona and everything, the people want to, wanted to go to locations they want to buy and all the things. So it was a really uh, a big place for for people uh, with lots of lots of games and lots of uh, lots of things to see. And uh, we had a really really great um, kind of convention. We were out of stock on day four, also on Sunday. We had, we had twenty copies left uh, to, for the first hour, and then we were done. So, which was nice because we had the chance to to see some other games for us, <laughs> and um, yeah, this was really insane. We we sold uh, 800 copies uh, in four days, which is round about I think oh, a good part from the Kickstarter, you know. So, um, if, if we're looking back from, uh, from from the last year, so this was really insane for us, and yeah, we had never believed that that we can go out of stock so fast. So, four days after release, yeah, that was really insane. 800 copies. So I just want to hang on that for a second. 800 copies. Most Kickstarter campaigns would be would kill to to have 800 backers, right? For you to go through yeah. 800 games in in one convention, like man, uh, you should be very very proud of that. That is a huge accomplishment. And uh, I I had a chance to actually get over to I think you, was it Hall A you you were in which hall were you? Uh, a three I think. Or a three or whatever. Yeah, um, it, it was the big hall, right? It was yeah, kind of yeah, one yeah. of the bigger ones. Yeah. And I had trouble even getting close to your booth. <laughs> like there was a mob <laughs> of people just all around you guys. Like it was crazy. How many games did you guys have going at one time? It seemed like there was a couple at least. Oh, um, good question. <laughs> I I don't I don't know to be honest. You know, um, the the, the, the um. Um, it was so so crazy. The fireworkers they wanted to to close the the complete complete hole because there oh. was not e enough um, um, air to breathe. So on Friday, well, on oh, Thursday. Wow. So uh, and then they opened some uh, some special doors or something like that you know, to to get some uh, some fresh air into it. So there was lots of lots of people and crowd inside the uh, inside the hall, and uh, and you know we we felt it. You know we feel a little dizzy and. Uh, it was it was strange, but but it was also really really good. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I said to my uh, my brother who was there with me uh, in, in our booth, I said, I'll, "I'll be back and give me like ten minutes. I'll be right back." And I was over in like hall five, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like when we did the setup, the initial setup when the place is empty, it's it's a five minutes to go there yeah. and quick yeah. chit chat and then come back, right? I was gone for like an hour and a half. Like I could not move. Like you're basically like like what the fish just kind of moving with the flow of the river, right? Like it's. It, there's there is nothing like it that I've I've ever experienced in in, in this game industry it is definitely something for for those to uh, who love games like we do at least to experience once in your life is to to go to Essen. Um, so among cultists is this campaign that you had run um, last year and mm -hmm. uh, had uh, at that. And we're gonna get into the the reprint here in a second. But for those who don't know you, can you give us just a quick overview of kind of who you are? And kind of what your company is about for those who don't know where you guys are located and so forth. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm Stefan Godot from from Godot Games, and uh, we are living in Germany. We are just three and a half guy, so we are really a small a small publisher, indie publisher, and we're doing this as a part time job. So this is not our full time job. And um, yeah, so we are started uh, 2017 with um, social deduction games with Human Punishment, um, and we advanced with an expansion, and we advanced with a big. Uh, um, 
a big social action game, you know, for, with, with the whole table and in the same universe and so. And uh, yeah, and social action is a big part of us. <laughs> so we advanced this uh, way more. And last year was our peak, I would say, because uh, yeah, we launched uh, Among Cultists, which is uh, yeah, a board game in heavily inspired by the Among Us video game. And yeah. this had, had a really big hype in the Corona and COVID-19 uh, uh, period, you know, and um yeah, this was a lot, lot, a big theme because people really tried hard to bring a Among Us bot game into the into the universe, but uh, there were lots of um, problems with with it because it's easier to play this online. You know, I can kill someone and no one knows uh, who was who was a killer, and the, the, that one can't can't speak and can can't say anything. So this is easier at, at the at the computer, but it's hard if you're at the at the table and you know I will kill you and everyone looking at me. So it's it's obvious that I'm the killer, right? Or or maybe yeah. the person knows who's the killer. This person can't not say who is the killer because sometimes it's enough to look at the person and you know what's happening, right? So um, so this was really a, a big point um, to figure out um, how can you do this and. Um, if this point is clean, everything was pretty easy for this game. So you know we have a really we are really on point at the moment. You know we can we can build expansions. We can do do bring more roles into the game. So this is not at the moment it's not so not not so hard for us. But at the start, of course, we needed lots of um, testing sessions and balancing sessions and, and everything. We played over three hundred hours on tabletop simulator in this game. So just to to bring everything on point, you know, with every player count, oh, wow. every, every role and every expansion and every every combination and everything. So three. 300 hours uh, I, I saw it uh, yesterday so I spent completely in just uh, playtesting this game yeah how did you guys figure it so the one thing that I thought was kind of clever is when when you are in when you cross paths with somebody right so if you're mm -hmm. in the same hallway or the same room um you each have this kind of pulse card that uh, shows whether you're you're alive or dead right mm -hmm. and you you're you're to take one from your hand and if you're an investigator it's going to obviously be a healthy pulse right and if you're a cultist, it's going to be maybe uh, you're going to hand the person one that shows that they're 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 losing their pulse or that they're they're dying. But neither person sees what the other person handed them, right? So you you, you swap cards or face down. You don't get to see them. They go into your pile, and only at a later date when somebody wants to kind of check your pulse and see, yeah. you know, are you alive or dead, and they shuffle them up randomly and can look at them. Can they they finally tell? I found that was a really clever mechanic. How long did it take you guys to kind of hone in on that and, and figure that piece out? Um, yeah, it's always hard to, to say how long you, you take for this because, you know, in your head, yeah. it's so long in your head <laughs> and you need uh, days and weeks until you tr start trying to build everything or to write something down and everything. So um, this was the only um, exciting as uh, well most difficult part you know to to um, to bring this game to life because the rest was super easy to yeah. be honest um but this my my basic uh, my most I, I think the best part of it uh, is if you think about the Sixth Sense movie. You know, this was always my inspiration for this because there was, I don't want to spoil this game movie, but it's old, you know. Um, uh, in the end, Bruce Willis is, is, is a dead character, but he doesn't yeah. know it. And this is this is the, the trick, right? So um, you you don't have you have the information yet and another person must give you this information. And this is this is really tricky because, of course, the, the evil players can lie about it. If I find a dead, dead body on the ground, in, a, in the Among Us game, I can ignore it and I can go on, you know, and I can, I, I, I must don't need to push the alarm button. But in our game, it's it's the same situation. I, I see, okay, he's dead, but I don't care. So I, I can bring the card cuts back. I can say, hey, he's alive and I'm back and, and I'm done, you know. So, um, yeah, I, th I think this, this was the hardest part, but it was not, not not so long because the Sixth Sense movie was, was a great help here. Yeah, and, it, and I think once you've kind of figured that out, and as you said, everything else is easy, but now that you've kind of have, for lack of a better word, a, a platform, right? That this thing is mm -hmm. built on. There's no limit to the number of themes and locations and situations that you can now layer on top of that, that platform. Right. And you've seen that yeah. with some of the expansions <laughs> we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and where we start, your head automatically goes, okay, are they going to do one on like the space station next or something? Right. Like what, you know, mm -hmm. where are they going next? Yeah. Um, but it was cool. It was cool to see that. And for those who are listening who haven't uh, seen this game, number one, I'd recommend check it out. Um, but it is, it's kind of like a cross between like werewolf yet. Um, there's obviously the, the among us, like the video games, but then you also have this kind of video game feel where you're going to rooms and searching books and trying to find 
find stuff, right. That you can then, uh, score points with. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it is, it is super, super cool. Uh, I, I mean, I couldn't be happier for you guys. It is, it is robust, I guess. I know I always use this mm -hmm. word robust, but it's the only way I can describe it. It is such a large game, right? Like the, the yeah. table presence is large. You know, you got six panels you put together and you know, those reverse depending on the player count and so forth. But once you have this thing set up, like it's, it, 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 there's a lot of game there, right? Was there any concern from your perspective on when you guys were creating this <laughs> of like, how much do we put in here where we might run into some kind of limits as to how big this should be? Cause it could push over play times and things like that. Yeah. You know, we had, we had lots of learnings in our human punishment at the beginning because lots of people, um, um, had the feeling that the game is too comp too much complicated for for them. So I, I don't know what they expected to be honest. But it's an it's an expert game, you know. So if you if you're buying an expert game, you should await. Uh, you should uh, you would, would see a, a two to three hour game most of the time, right, or yeah. something like that. And you have some rules to read and, and everything. Um, and in in among cultists, we tested this a lot with among us us players. So it's, you know, it's good. The tabletop simulator is a video of you know, it's like a video game. So um, lots of people who who always and already enjoyed the Among Us game, played uh, the Among Cartes at TTS, and we tested this with them. And they said, hey, this, this is Among Us and with, with the new theme, right? And with, yeah, uh, um, yeah the two new twists maybe, but uh, it's, sometimes it's always already better because you know, the, the players can can talk. And in, in the video game, you are you are silenced until the end of the game. And if you're dying in the, in the first minute, you are you are uh, silent for the next 50 minutes you know so and this can be a little bit boring sometimes because yeah. you can't talk with everyone you, you want co conversations and discussions and you want to be part on the vote and everything which is not possible but in our game it is so um because the dead players have no information uh, who killed them so they can still talk they can still vote and everything and they can still help their team so um yeah um I, uh, you know, uh, we have a board game geek rating for, for complexity at 2.1, uh, something like that, you know, so I think this is pretty good at the moment where where, it, where it's absolutely fine, you know, we played this at, at schools with 10-year-old uh, children, we, yeah. we really wanted to test this because they, they don't know board games, but they know Among Us. And um, they completely um, uh, had the same discussions like the uh, that the adults, you know, they had the same lies, the same discussions like like we would do. So, and this was insane. This was a, was a big learning for us that this is also possible with with children, with with families, of course, if you're knowing uh, or if you're liking social deduction games with, with a little bit of lying and betraying your friends. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was also pretty clever too that, that you're easing people in, right? So. You know, there's the base base level where, you know, the AI cultists uh, and the fishermen that show up in the hallway, you can play yeah. without all <laughs> those and just play the core. Uh, you know, one team is trying to get books uh, before they get killed off. The other team, the, the cultists trying to lie their faces off and, and kill people silently. And then you do the basic votes and so forth. So, you know, for me, I thought that was that was well done. Right. When I mm -hmm. played the first time we played that that level because we had some people at the table that weren't heavy gamers right yeah. and you know explaining it especially if you're in a in a room with a lot of people and a lot of noise and distractions and so forth you know for me it was like okay let's 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 just play the core and make sure we get this down yeah and then we can layer on the other elements every time we get successful time we play which will also bring additional interest in the game because you keep adding new things in as you go that's not even including the expansions that's just like the base game you've got yeah. these different layers that you've kind of set this up that those layers can be kind of added on, so to speak, as you're kind of icing the cake, right? You can add another layer of icing as you keep going. Yeah, 100%. You know, we are, we are really big fans of um, adding more layers step by step because yeah. um, it's for people, uh, it's also also a big learning from for us. The, the first game of uh, of your game is the most important one. If the people don't like your first game, they will not play it again. This is yeah. really important for, the, for, for everyone, you know? Um, so uh, if your first game isn't good, People will sell the game, and they will, or they, or they, they hear from another one, and they will not play their game. So it's really important that your first game is easy enough that all people can enjoy it. So um, it's always a good idea to to minimize a little bit of your complexity if it, if it's if it's good for your game, of course, right? But uh, in our game, um, we had a good spot where we had okay, said, okay, it's it's good to um, ignore the cultists and the fishmen for the first round. And afterwards, you can add them. And afterwards, you can add more roles. And afterwards, you can add more maps. And so on. you have a, a new, um, you, you can uh, learn the game step by step. And you will always get something new, right? And 
But of course, there are also people who are ignoring this and they're just starting with lots of roles and everything. And um, and yeah, everyone is different, right? Um, I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of learning a game step by step. I think this is, this is the best way for, for people to enjoy the game. It's always important in a big group, you know, if you have eight people at the table, um, it's so hard to teach rules to eight, seven players next next by you. You know, someone will look at the mobile phone. Someone is talking with another one. It's so hard to get the attention. Oh, yeah. It's painful. So, <laughs> yes. So uh, so it's really important if you don't need 20 or 30 minutes for your rules. Maybe you, you can do it in 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and then then you can start, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I'm going to show the, uh, the the current page. I mean, congratulations. I, I can put this in Canadian dollars. It's the only way I can see it. But mm -hmm. you're at $176,000. So far on your campaign, you still got 18 days to go. So obviously you guys are going to raise what you need to do a reprint and then plus some. Uh, so congrats on that. Um, can you walk us through quickly kind of, you obviously have the game and for those who are watching, uh, the visuals look mm -hmm. phenomenal. So congrats again on the artwork and everything that was done. Um, but talk a little bit about these expansions because this this reprint is coming with additional stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so we already had two expansions in, in your first campaign. You, we had about two different expansion maps, so you can play on different locations. I think which is really important because this game is so much like a dungeon crawler and like this, you know, it's about the atmosphere, about the theme and everything. And so we really wanted to change the location here. And uh, so we had three locations in the last campaign. And we had lots of great ideas for a new for a new location, which will enter this this campaign uh, this year. So um, this this year we were we were in in the Antarctic, uh, in Antarctica, and mm -hmm. um, you know there's a there's a creepy um, legend in the internet about an, a monster in the Antarctica, which is called Organism Forty Six B. You can Google this, and um, there was a Russian um, laboratory team, uh, and they tried to find this monster, and this monster killed all of them, but one could escape, and they can tell the story, you know, about this big creature with tentacles and everything. And in this expansion, which is new, um, we are the second team which will enter the Antarctica, and we try to find this monster. And we, of course, we try to eliminate it, because this monster cat could easily kill uh, our whole, um, yeah, human... Um, humanity um so um so we will enter the antarctica as a team of course and we will bring two new small uh, tweaks to the game the first one because we have a uh, dungeon crawler like game we will bring loot to the game so you can find stuff in the rooms which is nice you know if you're finding uh, maybe you find a sniper gun and you can sh uh, shoot a, a cultist uh, uh, from another room or something like that or maybe you find uh, um, uh, good uh, shoes, you know, for for the, for the snow. And you have one yeah. more movement and everything. So there are lots of good things you can find, and of course you can share them with others. You can drop them down, or if you if you be, be become a ghost, you lose. Of course, you lose your stuff, right? Zack. Now it's it's gone because now it's 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 on the ground because you're a ghost at this moment, and other people can 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 grab it if if they join uh, your room, and. Um, but unfortunately, there are also some evil uh, items you can find, and there are three. Um, red uh, relics and if you find them and uh, the big organism 46b would awake in the game so uh, you know that the, the board are six parts uh, you know um, which you can put together for the big map and one of the six parts is just the monster you know if you if it's awake you just turn one one side to the other and you have a big big evil um tentacle monster uh, waiting for you because when the game ends you must of course fight the monster yeah that's cool and then have you thought, I mean, I've been scrolling here the entire time you've been mm -hmm. talking and the, the scrolling hasn't stopped. There's just so much stuff on your page, yeah. <laughs> which is crazy. There's a lot, uh, a lot here. Have you put thoughts to how, like, I know you're working on other games. We're going to talk about the other games in a second as mm -hmm. well, but what's the over vision, uh, the vision for Among Cultus? Like, is this something that you see like a new map or a new skin coming once a year, once every two years? Or have you kind of like flushed out exactly what where you want it and it's just going to stay as it is? Or kind of what's the plan on this? Mm -hmm. This is a good question. You know, we, we thought a lot about this because how many maps are enough or how many um, could be good for the players, right? And um, for the season one, I could say, you know, the, the three maps last year was perfect, I think, because uh, if you know the rules and, and all players know what they must do, you can play the game in maybe 60 to 90 minutes easily if you know if, if you don't know what you're doing and so you can play two or three games on, on one game night and so you can see all of the maps um 
for yes, now we have the force map, right? You know, with the Antarctica. And to be honest, we think this is enough. Um, I, I, I really think four maps is really uh, lots of varia variation for the game. You, you can choose. Maybe you have you have uh, you have you you are a winter um, uh, vacation, and now you will play the Antarctica map, right? But maybe if mm -hmm. you are if you if you have a creepy um, horror night or something like that, maybe you would go to the to the mine in down. Uh, in um, mountains of chaos or something like that so you can switch the theme and maybe uh, and i think four is a pretty good spot where we are now and i'm at the moment i think i really wanted to see more themes you know in, in maybe some pyramids or maybe you know in a space station or something like that which would be a great uh, um, yeah easter egg for the among us stuff and everything but for the moment you know we have we have the, the antarctica with lots of uh, the the thing easter eggs inside so um yeah I, th I think we are pretty good on, on point at the moment. Yeah. It's a lot of work, right? Like even yeah, yeah. like somebody thinks, oh, just throw another, oh, just just throw space on it. It'll be fine. It's <laughs> like, yeah, like you have any idea how much development that is? That's a lot of work, right? Yeah. You know, artists and development and play testing yeah. and things like that. But um, now that's interesting because, I, you know, we're, we're in a similar spot on, you know, Cities of Venus, which is one of the ones mm -hmm. that we had launched recently. And, you know, we have these standalone sequels that have kind of been mapped out for the next three, four years. But at some point you have to kind of say, at what point will it be kind of contained as a universe, you know, yeah. and, and is the plan to keep going as far as you can go? Like, do you, for lack of a better word, how far do you milk it? Or do you, you know, at some point kind of cut it off and say, okay, we had our fill on that one. Now let's see if we can, you know, port this audience over to another experience altogether, uh, which is another game design, or maybe there's another social deduction game we're working on or so forth. Right. Um, I think that's cool. Uh, one one thing that uh, we haven't talked about, but we have talked about in prior episodes, but I think it's important to mention is that you mentor people uh, across Europe that are, you know, new game designers, people looking to kind of put their own games uh, on Kickstarter. Um, how is that? How is that playing out for you? Like you obviously you have a lot of time invested in Godot games, right? And mm -hmm. just getting your titles out. But you're still kind of pairing off, you know, part of your time towards this kind of mentorship role. How much time do you put into that each week in terms of, you know, guiding some of these other up and comers? You know, um, this is my full time job since two years now. So uh, it's most of the time uh, I, I'm using this. So uh, yeah. maybe I think 30 to 40 hours, something like that, uh, or maybe more. You know, my, my wife uh, sleeps earlier. I could work more, you know. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's always uh, it's, about, it's about looking, you know, it's about, it's about family time, it's about, about working time. And of course, um, I need to to get my money, of course, but in the end, Godot games is my you know it's my passion, right? So yeah. I, I um, maybe uh, I should sleep more, but I could also work more for for my next game with Godot games. So um, yeah, it's it's always hard to to bring everything on point, but um, yeah, so it, it really costs a lot of time, you know, if you're work, working with two jobs. But um, in the end, they um, they feel pretty good together, you know, because everything yeah. I learn in this in the in one I can use for the other one, and I can bring my my knowledge um, to my to my customers, and and also I get new knowledge in every campaign, you know, because crowdfunding is not the same every every year, because there's lots of lots of things that will change, you know, about uh, the time that people spend in a Kickstarter video or how much uh, um, space you can use for a picture. Or, you know, sometimes people only scroll for five times. You have f five seconds, you know, to to bring people into your campaign, or they are out. So there are lots of things you, you must, uh, yeah, you must understand. And so there's a big, always a big learning for me. And I think it's it's nice because I can use it for both both sides of my jobs. Is there any kind of research that that you do? Like, so like for instance, that factoid, you know, people they scroll for you know five seconds, which is in general on anything, right? But yeah, that's a good point of you know, if somebody flips their thumb five times, are they getting enough information uh on that page? And if not, maybe you need to move the order that you have things on your I mean, that's very insightful, actually. Just <laughs> as I'm just saying this out loud, I'm definitely gonna be putting some thought into that on my next uh, my next page creation. Um, how do you how do you keep up with that? Like in terms of staying on top of what's new, like even Kickstarter itself has recently changed, right? Some of his dashboards and back end and so yeah. forth. And you've got these other platforms like Backerkit and, you know, uh, obviously Game with, uh, with yeah. GameFound. Um, are you focused predominantly on, on just kind of trying to know Kickstarter itself as best as you can, or are you starting to branch into some of these other platforms as well? 
Um, to be honest, I, I really started hard with Kickstarter. You know, this was my first um, yeah. um, platform, you know, uh, with, um, with with Godo games and with my first customers and everything. But to be honest, I see so much more potential in GameFound because they're doing so much more good stuff on their on their side. Mm. And Kickstarter uh, is is really hard to to get more features on it. You know, they they do something, but it's really slow and. Yeah, uh, lots of things. I, I I think wow, maybe you could be a little bit quicker. I'm a little bit faster, and I and I really think there's a good, there are good reasons because why people and why good great what are big publishers switching the platform from Kickstarter to GameFound. You know, Simon's first campaign now was on GameFound and not on Kickstarter with with their He-Man game, right? Um, yeah. Some days ago. So this this has always, always, all everything has has impact, you know. And um, if you are not doing well enough with your with your platform. If you're not giving not not good enough uh, service, people will leave you. And uh, at the moment, you will see see this at every, every day. You know, chip theory games has is is gone. Um, Simon is gone. So lots lots of them uh, switching the platform. And to be honest, I'm not sure how how good Becker Kit uh, will will be in the next years. Um, this is one thing I I really don't see that much. But mm. GameFound is really really strong and and uh, really uh, yeah at the limit. Yeah, it seems that uh, clearly. I, I think you need the large, the large players to go first, right? Because they yeah. can spend the money on the advertising, and they will push the people to the platform. It's still, I think, from my 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 experience, for smaller, you know, the smaller guys like myself, mm -hmm. um, it, it it seems like the audience is still not the size of what you're going to have with with Kickstarter. Right? I think it's like still like a quarter of the size, and just having that you know, people finding your game as they're kind of scrolling. Kickstarter still seems to be the platform for that. doesn't mean it's going to be like that forever. Um, but it seems like, you know, so some of these larger guys come over and really start bringing the traffic over. So that audience, mm -hmm. that inherent audience mm -hmm. in there is, is large enough that the smaller people will really benefit. Yeah, 100%. You know, uh, last week or, or maybe two weeks ago, there were two campaigns on GameFound Live. And they were not at, at the at the landing page, you know, because at the starting page, because other campaigns for the future where um, get their um, they get their crowd there, you know. So, so, so there was advertisement for future campaigns, but not for two live campaigns, campaigns, which is insane, right? So That's you know, cool. you are you are live, and no one will see it because um, no one cares. Um, this is a problem. But in the end, um, if you are at Kickstarter and you have your landing page and you will get followers. It's really hard to get followers on Kickstarter, you know. Um, there are so many, so many um, uh, coming uh, uh, campaigns, and on GameFound, it's really easy to get followers. So it's 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 a complete different uh, situation because you don't need to pay to get followers on on GameFound because all people there know board games and they want board games. It's, it's completely your uh, your crowd, um, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's really really uh, interesting uh, how the how both uh, platforms, uh, yeah. Have you run campaigns on GameFound yet? I'm sorry. Have you run a campaign on on GameFound yet, or? Um, not yet, but this will follow. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on that note, what the, you you talked just before we went on air that you you had another game that's uh, that's in the works. Are you allowed to talk about it yet, or can you sneak, give us a sneak peek or a, a, a tease as to what's coming? Yes, one hundred percent. You know, for, uh, so far we only did the social deduction uh, games, and we mm. had lots of fun with it. But there's always the, uh, the, uh, a dark side of it because the social deduction always gives you these uh, bad player counts. You know, you need four to eight players, or there are other games with ten players and everything, and you you do have no clue how many people will say to you. Ah, I love this game, but I have never. We are never with four players. We are only yeah. two players. We are only three players. You know, and um. I can't hear this anymore. So, so we, uh, so uh, uh, in our head, um, we we know that we must do something different this time, and uh, so we will change the our our genre. So we will switch to uh, worker placement. Um, we have a, a worker placement game, which is nearly uh, it's not done, but it's nearly done, I, I would say, and it's heavily inspired by um, by Harry Potter and by Hogwarts and everything. So the magical uh, world. So we are all students, and we are becoming, um, yeah, we're becoming part of a, of a great magical school, and uh, we must prepare. You know, we need we need to uh, 
learn magic spells. We must we can talk with the, with the teachers. Maybe we can bribe bribe the teachers if if we um, if we have enough money, or maybe our parents can help us. You know, the, you you can start your own legacy or the legacy of your parents. So you have some pretty good choices which you can you can take. And of course, then you have four different houses in the game, and every house has has unique skills. And so you must choose wisely which uh, which house could be your game style, of course. And, and um, so yeah, there's lots of um, crunchy good decisions in the game, and, and lots of interaction. You you have your duels with other players, you know, in the, in the in the dual uh, magical arena, and you have magical events after some school years, two to three in in every game. But of course, there are way more magical events, so not every everyone is in the game. So you must. Um, Maybe you can spy a little bit and you can find out uh, what is the next event so you can prepare for it. But the other people, of course, maybe they will also spy or they will try to spy what you are doing. And they try to, to do the same and everything. So there's lots of interaction between the players. And I really, really think this brings lots of new interactive ways to the worker placement genre. Yeah. That oh, sounds awesome. If people want to check that out, is there like a link they can go to, to or like a page that can sign up to get more information or? Unfortunately, not yet, but it's it's an, an, in development. I think in the next days, this will be uh, live as, as a follower page or as a link, landing page. Um, but if you're looking for Foxpaw at Botan Geek or something like that, you will find the first pictures. Or go to godogames.com. Oh, yeah. Would that have it as well? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we will have something there. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, for those who want uh, to check out the reprint, we missed out maybe on the first campaign of Among Cultists and are interested in seeing uh, the current campaign with all the expansions, I am going to put a link in the show notes. Uh, again, it's running for another 18 days, already at $176,000 funded. Again, I want to congratulate you on that, my friend. Uh, it, it could be more deserving of a better guy. And uh, you know, I want to wish you all the best and your team all the best in this coming year. Thank you so much. You know, it's 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 a it's a work about five weeks now. So just for this campaign, and the, which is, which is really insane. Most of the time, you have one year of preparation and everything. And this this year, uh, last year, at, after the Essen Spiel in October, we were you know, we were out of stock. And uh, yeah, uh, we we need really need more games. You know, to to have uh, for the for the, for the for the market and for the crowd and everything. So yeah, it it, it so five weeks was really hard, you know. Alone with the artists, you know, the artists must be done in five weeks with the map, map design, with the cover design and everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, all the best, and uh, we will see you hopefully at Essen this year. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> all right, you take care, buddy. Cheers. Bye. This has been an episode of the Board Game Binge Podcast, hosted by James Staley. Produced by James Staley and Mike Bruner, with original music by Nick Smith. If you would like to watch these interviews live, simply subscribe to our YouTube channel, Board Game Binge, and you'll get access to live interviews, giveaways, and interesting board game content from across the industry. I can't wait for you to join us. See you next time.